evening, everybody. Um, happy to welcome you. Um, it's good morning for some of us. Thanks, Vince, for joining us from Los Angeles. Thank, thanks, nice Marco. Marco, you're on mute, so you might unmute your um, computer. Welcome from Italy, I guess. Where are you in Italy? I'm in Rome. Welcome okay. to you. Bu nice Buonasera, to Marco. Buonasera. <laughs> And uh, then we have my good friend Romain joining us from the Red Cross, and he's based in Geneva. Good evening, Romain. Hi, Sixteen. I'm very happy to be there with you. Thank you. Um, I'm very happy to welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. And just need to give you some uh, maintenance issues or, um, or, or uh, information as we are being recorded. Um, please ask your questions on the chat here below. I will get them as they come and ask our um, speakers to, to help me answer them. Uh, if you want, you can also say where you're from so we have an idea of uh, who's listening and, and where people are from. It's always nice to know. So uh, I see that there's seven participants already. Welcome everybody. So today the, the theme of the talk is about celebrities, it's about influencers, it's about social media and how it actually works and why is the new technology a big part of social media or is it? We don't know. We're going to try and find out today. Uh, for those who don't know what an NFT is, I think we've been running these webinars for about a year so people do know what an NFT is, but today I learned a new uh, definition for an NFT. It's not a fungible, non-fungible token. It's a new facet technology, which I thought was interesting. Mm -hmm. It's just a new way. It's the evolution of computers, etc. And it's, it's nothing to be afraid of. It's just a natural evolution and progress. So new facet technology is the new term. Um, I'm running the wise.art NFT platform, which is a marketplace, which is multi-blockchain. It's secured by the cybersecurity technology of WiseKey. Uh, WiseKey has been very busy as CEO talking at the UN at the moment, and the UN has now decided and opted to protect digital IDs together with the new technology on the blockchain. So that's a big step ahead for this technology. But as I said, the progress is natural and organic. So it's just an optimistic point of view, which is good to hold on to. I might ask our speakers now to um, to introduce themselves. Perhaps we'll start with Vince in LA and Sunny LA. Would you tell us what you're doing and who you are? Hi, good afternoon or evening. My name is Vince Armino. I'm uh, CEO of uh, Alma Festivals Entertainment and Futuro.io. Um, we're an entertainment company that focuses on music festivals and concerts. Uh, in the area of ticketing and uh, collectibles. And uh, that's where we see expansion for NFTs uh, in our space for utility, for VIP, uh, fan base, fan club, uh, all types of fan engagement uh, opportunities. Okay, you'll tell us what collectibles are a little bit later on, I'm curious. Um, Marco, who are you? What do you do in Rome? <laughs> Uh, well, I'm a musician, first of all, and then I'm, uh, well, I prefer to uh, introduce myself like an artistic producer um, because, um, well, I produce uh, music, I produce uh, video art, uh, and I prefer to say media art uh, because everything uh, I, I do, I produce, is uh, really uh, connected uh, to uh, all the forms of uh, uh, digital art and all the forms of, uh, how can we say, analog art, uh, like we uh, all, uh, obviously uh, produce uh, um, uh, with uh, um, vintage machines, uh, as you can say uh, between me, uh, but we produce with uh, like uh, um, uh, the most new uh, technologies uh, uh, in, in uh, digital audio, uh, and then of course in uh, um, in the world of NFT, uh, I'm really new, but but uh, well, I worked a lot for uh, uh, many times to make a, a really uh, different kind of uh, um, production uh, uh, in in the um, 
Italian area because in, in Italy is really uh, um, used to uh, produce uh, um, pop music in this moment the trap music is really popular uh, but there is a, a lot of kind of uh, different uh, uh productions uh, that we uh we really believe in and we believe uh, in uh, the uh, new media in the use of new media in uh, uh, actual uh, actually in, in in the modern uh production so for us it's really important to think about nft like a new way um not only to monetize but to like to uh uh, present our productions. Yeah, it's for sure that it's a uh, it's growing so rapidly. I mean, I remember electronic music starting in the 70s and maybe even before, and then it went through the 90s with the DJs. And then last year with Vince, we were just talking about skiing, but I went to a big festival called Tomorrowland up in Alpe d'Huez. And, uh, you know, they had five live stage on the snow and the, you know, it was incredible. And there the NFTs were a big thing, I have to say. They had treasure hunts. We had to ski, get your latest ticket with an NFT and you had your clock at, to yeah. clock in. And it was really fascinating how it developed. Romain, you're completely on the opposite side of fundraising and saving <laughs> lives with the Red Cross, but you also use music and art to... Um, to bring awareness, right? Yeah, thank you, 16. And I'm impressed by your skiing, that, I mean, skills yeah, <laughs> to, <okay. laughs> to go through Tomorrowland in, on, the, on the slopes. But uh, yeah, no, thank you, 16. Indeed, I am a bit uh, from a completely different industry, if, we can, if I may. So uh, I'm indeed in charge of private partnerships and philanthropy for what we call the International Committee of the Red Cross, uh, best known as the ICRC. My role is really to develop close relationship between my organization and its supporters or, or partners, uh, whether donors or people who just want to support our cause and want to, 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 to really help us uh, promote the humanitarian action of, of the institution. Uh, maybe just to summarize in two sentences, the ICRC so is the oldest humanitarian organization worldwide. We, today we have more than 20,000 uh, colleagues or deleg delegates, as we call them, working in around 100 countries uh, in the world. Since the creation in 1863, uh, we have only and the sole objective of basically protecting and assisting uh, victims of armed conflicts and violence worldwide. Every, basically for us, the, the, net, the purpose of our institution is really that every person who is in need can receive aid without fear and uh, favor. So uh, our principles are around neutrality, independence, and uh, impartiality. It's the reason why you quite often see the International Committee of the Red Cross um, in the middle of uh, several of the main conflicts that are surrounding us, unfortunately. Uh, this neutrality, uh, as I mentioned, really gives us the access uh, to go in places where we are the only ones to be able to go. Um, in many countries, uh, we are the only humanitarian organization that governments really are inter interested with. And uh, this allows us to really protect the people, uh, again, affected by the conflict. So in my current role, in addition to really maintaining, I would say, regular partnerships with our existing donors, I also, and maybe it's the reason of why I'm there today, is really I try to explore as well new ideas on how we can potentially identify ways of obviously increasing our fundraising, uh, in particular looking into new technologies, innovation, but as well really communicate, communicating as well on the challenges that we face, the challenges that we really try to find solutions to and uh, really also come i mean make sure that all of you that are connected today can really be um, encouraged to support the icrc so thank you very much absolutely roman what's interesting is that you i mean i've been following we've known each other for a while and you it's really innovative i've been invited to um to theater plays i've been invited to art shows i've been invited to concerts and uh, that's all organized, you know, in favor of the Red Cross. So I think it's a really good way. But also you've got a huge amount of archives since inception. 
uh, which we'll talk about that later, but which maybe, you know, the new technologies can help you monetize on a little bit more even, or even just protect the protect your um, your archives on human beings, because you've also got a lot of IDs of people who, who went lost, whose IDs got lost, and we need to recreate those. So there's a whole approach with the new technologies that could be useful, but that's getting a little bit away from the celebrities. So... Um, how is it in uh, Vince? Maybe how is it in 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 the ticketing world? What's what's so new? What's the difference between before and now? I, I think in the ticketing world, uh, what we all want to know as uh, producers and um, is who our fan base are, are. You know, and and the ticketing allows uh, the, the the normal ticketing allows for fraud and uh, scalping and stuff like that with the new ticketing that we uh, see with the blockchain and what in the uh, nfts it's a it's more controlled uh you, you eliminate the scalping eliminate all the different things if you can control that uh, and uh and so I, I see that um we are as we step into the nft space we're learning who our fan base are on a personal scale and mm -hmm. that's what every marketer wants to be at right and so I, I believe that it's, uh, NFTs are going to have a, a, a big impact in what we're doing in the future, uh, as well as, as the present. You know, we're, so we're uh, utilizing it in certain events, small events, just to see how the fan engagement, uh, how they, they uh, load their uh, wallet, and et cetera. So it's still a, a minority uh, group of uh, the big fan base that are technical savvy or NFT savvy. And okay. so, you know, we, so, you know, there's a little bit of a learning curve and, uh, but the acceptance we believe in the next couple of years will be uh, mainstream. I think instead of just doing a, a specific part of the, the festival, it'll be now the general admission. Everybody will have a ticket like that. Okay. Uh, there's sports, te there's sports teams that are already adapting that uh, here in America, like in uh, basketball and whatnot. And so, uh, you know, we're following that same type of uh, uh, focus, if you okay. will. Do you think that, I'm thinking collectible now, as you mentioned it before, do you think that um, the ticketing companies will issue one ticket, which will be like an ID for one given fan, and that ticket will just be renewed every year, not changed? Or do you think you'll issue new designs so that there is a market that starts going on the secondary market and some become perhaps more rare than others? or is there going Absolutely. to be that sort of aspect? Uh, talking about the first part um, it, is that, yes, you know, they'll be able to renew the ticketing year after year, especially if you're a, a, a top tier attendee, right? Like say somebody's like a VIP. Um, and, and so that will happen automatically. Uh, but we have to gamify our ticketing strategy in order to uh, have the collectible, correct? And so... Um, uh, we uh, we want to be innovative as far as designs and, and trends and keep on top of that because it takes the gamification to uh, really move the, um, the the base the fan base to uh, want to do these tickets to buy these tickets because of the collectible right mm -hmm. uh, not only the experience but the collectible they get whether it be an art piece of the the actual concert maybe some type of rarity from one of the artists that we're highlighting in the event. Uh, maybe some type of treasure hunt or some type of gamification aspect uh, where they have something that's very unique. So yeah. year after year, they're able to uh, either uh, upgrade, sell on the secondary market uh, or cash it in for others. You know, it'll be some type of uh, a redeemable type of collectible. And so yeah. every year they can get something. The way it okay. worked with Tomorrowland when I went last, I mean, this year, but in the spring, it was um, if you bought the top ticket, the top tier ticket, you actually got hints or, or uh, you know, um, different clues for the treasure hunt, which led you then to secret concerts that not everybody had access to. And so you actually made a lot more out of your festival, which was five days than you did if you just bought the ticket for the one concert and didn't do the NFT program uh you know which some people did as you said it's not the majority that does the nfts yet how is that uh, marco and for the for the 
for the musicians in that case, do you get more out of it with NFTs or do you, well, I know there's royalties now, so you get, you know, but you had royalties before when people, radios played your music, you still got some money, but now with the NFTs, is that increased or is it making it more complicated? Oh, uh, well, um, everybody knows, uh, you perfectly know that now is not the best moment for uh, investing in, uh, in crypto values, in, in NFTs. Uh, and so um, we can say that we, we came back uh, in the past, in, in this period, but uh, last year I was, um, I can say, the first in, in Italy uh to create a um, video a musical video art or video clip as you want uh in, and, and to make it became an nft uh from that moment i started to think that that um, many things can uh, can became nfts because for me um the real um uh importance that as this this world uh, uh, web 3.0 or uh, nft is uh, um, is the possibility uh, to prove uh, the, um, uh, the, the 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 production is uh, is is yours and yes. uh, that the file is uh, uh, is uh, is Unique. in your process yes yeah. Exactly. So uh, this is the, the most important thing for now, because uh, I, I don't think that in Italy we can say that there is a, a real market of, of NFTs. Uh, but for my personal experience, what happened is that, uh, well, um, I told you before, I, I make music and uh, cinema uh, from uh, a long time, but uh, um, last year was really full of great news for uh, for us, for my label and for me, because well, um, I was involved in some uh, artistic movement. So uh, I collaborate with many uh, crypto artists uh, okay. till this year, till this uh, January, where after some uh, uh, prizes that we we won in um, in well in uh, contemporary art. That was like a, a kind of market that for me is really new. But this year, um, uh, my project uh, finished in uh, one of the most important uh, Italian reviews, uh, uh, Artein. So uh, what happened is that the, the attention of many people and the fans, the fan base of uh, um, of my label, of Marco Ndiro, or and of the artists that, that uh, I have around and the producer I have around, um, uh, well, there was more attention that was in increased uh, a lot. But mm -hmm. I cannot say that uh, for now, NFT market uh, is like reality. It's like something uh, uh, that we can say, because um, the mo um, uh, most famous artists, uh, uh, they, they started to make NFT just you know because uh, uh, it, maybe it was right to do this for a kind <laughs> of uh, uh, i can say like a market strategy but not because you really want to uh, to go inside the crypto art uh, movement, movement if, yeah. if we if we want to call it in this way because uh, uh, we cannot say there is nft art but there is crypto art in nft uh, yeah. But but you know uh, I think that the the the, the, the way the street is really long, uh, but uh, for me it was really opportunity to I, I told you before to um, uh, increase my uh, um, my part of the my, the core business of my of my label and we yeah. started to we made uh, for example a video game. Okay. And so all the all our kind of all this kind of uh, art for me. They are connected. Cinema, music, video game, they are really connected. Uh, Around the new technology, that's for sure. Exactly. But I think the more you have famous stars that are doing it, even if they do it for, as you say, maybe the wrong reasons, because it's the trend or whatever, it's just going to get the ball rolling. And I think um, perhaps as well, if, if I see that, uh, I'll give a, a, an example, but when people use Madonna to do the new series of where she's giving birth to trees, um, 
you know, maybe if people say, okay, so Madonna's in it, people already made $69 million with it, etc. cetera. Um, I think that will get other people, the everyday people, let's say, or the street people hook on or at least listen and learn. And maybe Roma, that might be where you come in as well is do, do you think that ONGs in general use the stars to, to get the hype? Like use these sorts of example to say, you know, this is the time to give to us. Or how do you think that works? It's very interesting, Sixteen, and uh, thank you for your question because I would be quite, I don't have a clear answer because I know that many organizations basically rely on the impact of their ambassadors or the, I don't know if Madonna once decide to support uh, this organization, then they will have probably a big buzz and people will just connect to their Instagram or social media, or maybe if they have an NFT, I don't know. I'm sure this will have an impact on the short term. I'm just not sure how this is really valuable or powerful on the long term because, and to be honest, and if I share the experience of the ICRC, and we don't have ambassadors of the International Committee of the Red Cross for different reasons. First reason is really the reputation because we cannot, I mean, I mean, as you say that in introduction, we sometimes invite you for events because there is an artist who wants to give a concert for the work of the International Committee of the Red Cross. But we are not going to sign a 10 years agreement with this person because we don't know what will happen tomorrow or after tomorrow. And mm -hmm. very often, unfortunately, with this world, we, and as you say, maybe sometimes it's just publicity. Sometimes it's, I mean, you really need to make your assessment to be sure that this person is really invested and really understands what you are doing. And that what he's doing or he, she's doing in his activity cannot have a, a negative impact at the end on your work. Because mm -hmm. for us, I mean, as I was telling you at the, at the beginning, we access places where other cannot because we are a trusted organization, organization, because we have this neutrality, impartiality, independence. So if we go with, a, I mean, Vince is there, so maybe let's take maybe an artist from the US, I don't know which one, but then goes with an American flag saying I'm supporting the ICRC, then we might have issues with other uh, parties of the conflict and be seen maybe even if, I mean, and we are quite honest and you can see that, uh, we, our biggest donor uh, is, the, is the US. So, mm -hmm. but for us still, we have really, we, we really try to protect the, um, the significance and the, the, the strength of our logo because it's the way our colleagues were like in battlefields can still not be targeted as a potential targets uh, by uh, both sides. So it's, uh, it's quite a challenge, uh, this, uh, this question. However, and uh, that's why I would say as well, yes, uh, answer yes to your question. We really value when an artist or when uh, understands our approach and really wants to support through a concert, through a, we have artworks and I think we'll be speaking about it later on the, to, uh, I mean, during this discussion, but we, we, we really, so that the impact that an artist can have really to change um, an understanding of a, of a difficult issue. And maybe just to maybe come back to what my, my two colleagues uh, have mentioned before, I also wanted to say that we have as well very interesting dilemmas at the ICRC because the, so the ICRC I, I told is uh, more than 100, is almost 160 years. And we have indeed in our public archives, some very valuable uh, documents like letters from people like uh, the Che Guevara, the um, Nelson Mandela, just to mention two of the, the famous ones that are no longer private in the sense that you have a certain number of years mm -hmm. that you have to protect these communications. But today we could definitely, and we've been thinking of, can we maybe try to use these amazing documents that we have to also communicate about the, the role and the importance of the ICRC while going to visit Nelson Mandela in South Africa, what mm -hmm. he's been writing to us and his family. And that's been like 
these messages that have been like brought by our colleagues from him in the prison to his family, etc. So I do think that, and maybe new technologies can be also a great, uh, great tool for us to really be stronger in this communication because today you can, I mean, 16, you live in Geneva, but you can come at the headquarters of the International Committee of the Red Cross, go to the archives and see and ask them, can I see the, the correspondence of Nelson Mandela? It's public. So you can read all of this. That's amazing. But, I didn't even know that. Yeah. But bringing it to the IT, or at, I mean, through NFTs or really try to communicate around this for us would be amazing in the sense that people would understand clearly the added value of the work our colleagues are doing. But as yeah. well, we don't want to, I mean, we are like any organization, we, we need uh, donations to, to be able to implement our programs. But at the same time, we have very concrete ideas that, for example, all these documents that I'm just talking to you now, like the archives, we want to digitalize them. So in order that anyone in the, in the world can access this letter from Nelson Mandela. And what we were thinking is maybe, why don't we produce at one point an NFT of this letter? So someone basically buys it, but at the same time, he's not just buying it to give us money, but he's buying it for us to be able to digitalize all this data that we have yeah. that can be accessible like a public um, library. So. so it's a bull rolling. You're setting the motion and then, yeah, absolutely. That's fantastic. Now, it is important, of course, because the letters of, of Mansell Mandela would be more interesting to most of us than perhaps some, you know, I don't know, refugee or migrant that, that we don't know, basically. So that's probably where the celebrity comes in. Um, yeah, Vince, how is that How is that different with, with collectibles of, of sport people? Do you think, like, let's say um, a famous basketballer, if he was on the, on the starting the NFT collection, would that bring on other people? Do you think it would be the trend leader or it wouldn't matter? I think that there there is a lot of celebrities using NFTs, right, and to build their social network and uh, and and expand that, you know, through the sales of their collectibles or um, their collaborations, right. Um, I feel that you know uh, during the NFT uh, the inception of that there was a phase where everybody was just uh, doing as much as they could and then trying to figure out what's you know, at the end of the day, which route worked for them, you know? And, and so uh, there's still uh, a lot of brands using it. There's, there's a lot of uh, uh, celebrities on their own, doing their own uh, uh, pieces of artwork. Um, a lot of it is uh, connected to utility, you know? Uh, so there's uh, a sub event or uh, different types of uh, uh, collectibles. I'll give you an example. It could be, uh, and one musician is doing a song, uh, but he also has a ticketing uh, into it. You know, there's a the utility. Mm -hmm. And then there's the experience. Uh, and then there's also different uh, elements of uh, merchandise that a person will get. So it's like a mixed media approach to. Yeah. So, so I'm seeing that as the, uh, a, a, a very cool strategy to, uh, to, to keep the the new fans uh, uh, interested yeah those that are tech savvy right game a lot of them are gamers so they're pretty really tech savvy they know how to uh, get it in and out of things and they see this in the uh, you know I'm just throwing it out there in the metaverse as well mm -hmm. and and uh, Marco you were saying that in Italy it's not yet the sort of it's not that popular yet. Is that because the, now the crypto has gone down and everybody's seeing the bad side, or is it just because they haven't? Italians are not interested in in tech. Like, are the millenniums all into games and all that as well, or not so much? Um, well, we we have to make a, a difference between the crypto art world uh, and uh, the um, show business. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, in Italy, uh, because uh, um, uh, as I said before, uh, celebrities or um, famous uh, musicians, uh, singers, they used to, uh, they, they used 
to uh, to m produce their uh, own NFT uh, just for a market strategy, but after they didn't made other collection, for example, or collect. Uh -huh. um, is it could be really useful uh, what uh, Vince was saying, uh, for example, for ticketing, you no, know, for the utility that you can put in. Uh, uh in in a song for example or in a, in, a, in a video that you that you sell but for now it, it's not so um it's not this the approach i don't know how to say like uh, um it's, it's not uh, it's not usual um, most of people prefer uh, like to um, to go on spotify and not on uh, yeah. audios on audios for example we are thinking about, for example, a, stre a streaming uh, platform in uh, Web3, but uh, of course it will, will be really beautiful to, to do this uh, with like connection of uh, many labels. But it's not so easy to, uh, you know, to find in these people, in uh, um, the owners and the CEO of uh, uh, Italian labels, the the real interest in uh, in this kind of uh, uh, new way uh, of of, uh, um, of making money we can say because could be like this but for now is is the uh, i think the market in italy is, is really young for this and yeah. uh, and so uh, it will be for sure it will be uh, some something that will be um, uh, used by uh, the great labels more mm -hmm. uh, in few time, but for now uh, it's just in, in the mind of uh, uh, pioneers. <laughs> I think it will, it will, I know for sure because Wise Key is actually also involved, but the Vatican is very curious. So maybe in Italy, if a huge institution like the Vatican shows interest in protecting yeah. their data and maybe with the same sort of uh, aspect than the Red Cross, it will lead the rest of the people. Yeah, that's true. But there is a, a bit of confusion. Uh, I mean, here in uh, in my country, for example, uh, um, around uh, NFT, um, few people understand that this is a smart contract. Yes. Not like the file that became uh, uh, like a, a code because there is not uh, this technology for now. Uh, yeah. But it's like a smart contract that could be uh, used in beautiful ways, like we said till now. And for example, uh, we are trying to do this with an Italian platform. It's called uh, Only Musics, and they, uh, with them, uh, with Parodoi, my label, and uh, Only Musics, we we are we are trying um, to use uh, the uh, the heart of uh, young and. Uh, uh, and the famous uh, artists, we hope, um, to um, collect um, uh, some uh, um, uh, video or, or songs and then all, uh, well, um, a great percent of uh, uh, what will be sold um will be uh, will go we will, will, will go in on in the wallet of the um, uh, a comunità di Sant'Egidio, uh, Sant'Egidio community. They 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 are uh, really great people. They they work in the conflicts, for example. They make uh, 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 human corridors, uh, okay. for example. And so, uh, um, uh, talking about uh, ONG, uh, we are trying to do this to help. Uh, and we are trying to uh, to co connect artists uh, in this way. Yeah, this could be easier than uh, try to um, make this market grow now. For absolutely, me. and I think this that's is my opinion. Of course. Yeah, yeah. We have a question, so I'll quickly read that out. It's actually for um, for Roma. It's from a gentleman called William Tavelli. And he says, we're delighted to hold the Swiss Red Bull Cross 20th century last Saturday in Geneva, and we raised over 1 million Swiss francs. I'm sure you're aware of that. So for the first time, we included NFT art by Doodles in the Christie's charity auction held by Francois Curiel, which was sold for 35,000. Congratulations. 
Um, how do the panelists see this possibly growing and expanding to include perhaps NFT and music and film? So no, it's not to Roma actually, it's more to Marco and Vince. So that's I, what we were just saying. You, I mean, Marco was just explaining that this is already happening with this um, um, Comunita, Comunita de Gideo, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, it's a Comunita di Sante Gideo. Uh, yes, it's an Italian ONG that works in the conflicts uh, for uh, uh, human corridors. And uh, this, uh, mm, this collection will be called uh, uh, Non-War Token. Uh, so we we are trying to to connect artists. So why not uh, connect uh, ONG too in yeah. this moment? And so we are really open for this. Is that the same sort of vibe in 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 LA, Vince? Uh, yes. Uh, give an example. I'm working with an artist. Uh, he's about to do a world tour, and prior to the world tour, he's going to uh, do an auction. And uh, I see a lot of that uh, in, in marketing strategies. And so uh, in the auction, he'll you know, fundraise and uh, he'll sell uh, certain artwork, merchandise, uh, uh, different instruments, whatever he's selling, and it will go to a cause, right? And, um, and, and so that's, it's, it's good PR work. It's good uh, work with different agencies uh, because it, you know, the charities need that, you know, the exposure and the, the cash flow. Uh, and so we see a lot of that uh, in the talks. And I'm, I'm very fortunate to be working on that project coming up soon. And um, I think it'll be, you know, uh, very publicized. And once, you know, certain strategies are uh, worked out and, and are prosperous, then you'll see a lot more people doing various things. Uh, for those. Um, so yep. uh, I just want to do a side note. Um, uh, fan ambassadors or uh, influencers are great people to uh, promote products. You just got to find the right one, not products and services, but uh, you got to find the right ambassador that, that is lined up with your scope and, and work, right? Uh, not just somebody that's uh, very popular, because they, as you were talking, Roman, that uh, it could cause a lot of uh, bad publicity to that uh organization yeah well i mean also as you said in the long term things change i mean we you know we're all really surprised with the weinstein story and the, the big me too movement that ensued from that uh you know and then you're finding that the royals are in there as well so you know i things change in the world but um it's true that it does make sense to use famous people i mean even in the art world like um Mr. Tavelli was saying in his question, I mean, Francois Curiel is a, is a really well-respected figure in the auction world. And at the same time, he's a really good guy and funny. And, and I'm sure he would have made, I wasn't there, but I'm sure he would have made the, the event very lively. So that's, um, you know, it's important to have good people, but also who know what they're doing. If you take Angelina Jolie, I mean, she's an actress, so she knows how to behave. She knows how to raise a crowd. Um, only because it's her that's that's her job so um i think it's important what i sometimes worry about and i don't know what you guys think is that with influences as you mentioned them or, or ambassadors is that i find that a lot of younger people are you know when they're in, a, in adolescence and when they're trying to find themselves they sort of mimic all these people i'm thinking the kardashians and whatever and if these guys aren't the right ambassadors it could lead a lot of people the wrong way so that's where you know Vince is correct in saying you need to be careful, and at the same time you need to raise you know to encourage creativity and individuality. So you can all look like the Kardashians, but do you really want to? I'm not sure. Uh, it's a question that we'll see ten years from now to see how all these mini Kardashians turn out. <laughs> but um, right. it's it's also about this inclusivity. I also heard that. Um, Mattel, the, the Barbie doll company, they're now making, you know, a little bit heavier Barbies and, uh, you know, there's Barbies of all skin colors and all that sort of thing. That's part of evolution. And I think it's right as well to be inclusive in, in, in all that way um, without promoting obesity, obviously. I mean, there's health issues there too. So um, right. 
where, where, and that maybe that leads us on to the metaverse. I'm not sure this, uh, you know, Web3 and the 3D environment and those spaces, what do we do there? I think with inter arti um, artificial intelligence, you need to, intelligence, we need to feed those machines that are growing up right now to, to spit out or to learn the right things. And um, maybe, yeah, messages of peace and messages of, of um, creation is better than, than what's on the internet at the moment most of the time. I don't know what you think about that. I think Roman, you've, you can talk about that a little bit because every young person, migrant or not migrant or desolate or not desolate, they all have phones, right? Even in the, in the worst remote areas, or am I mistaken? Thank you. Uh, no, 16, I think I understand. I mean, and it's a challenge for all of us and the ICRC as a big organization is also dealing with that and we've discussed it together. We are also trying to see how the ICRC could be seen uh, in the metaverse. We are, for the first year, we are opening a digital uh, delegation in Luxembourg next, from 2023. So this would be like the, the beginning of our, let's say, Web3 uh, presence as well on how can we be where people are and continue disseminating the, the Geneva Conventions, the, um, all the principles that we try to, to, to promote of uh, protection and assistance of people. Uh, so, yeah, I would say we are uh, quite curious with still being quite careful because as you were just saying i think the problems of our world unfortunately are happening in front of us and uh, for those in europe uh, we know that there is some pressure coming from east um, there are terrible consequences of this conflict as well in the horn of africa in middle east of the inflation uh, climate change uh energy that is like the the raise of the cost of energy and people who basically are like just suffering from um lack of lack of food so i i do think that yeah i mean we can fly somewhere in the web3 but at the same time i think the idea for me is really to try to manage uh, and make sure that all the people whether on art or on somewhere else in the metaverse can all together take this responsibility of saying we cannot continue in the way we are going. And if it's through the metaverse that we can support the ICRC or the International Committee of the Court or any other organization that is trying to improve the state of the world, then there is really, um, that's the reason why we try to be there because we, we do think, I mean, we have huge needs. We have, mm -hmm. we are very curious about new technologies, but, we, at the end of the day, as you were saying, I mean, the little Kardashian fans should as well be people who can, at the end of the day, understand what are the needs of our world. And if we want to make it sustainable, if we want to save lives, if we want to make sure that people have enough to, I mean, to survive, that they have to understand what these big or small organizations are doing in the field. So, so what I know, so uh, really, quite curious about where we are going. As I was telling you, we are investing quite, um, I mean, some funds to, to be present there, but still with the idea of not losing the purpose of why we are doing this. So I'm really happy to be part of this panel and maybe discuss as well with Marco and Vince on ideas on how all these people can, maybe these celebrities can support us maybe with some, I mean, some ideas on basically bringing people to real life. And, and voila. We'll organize in the, in the next space, we'll organize, Marco will organize the concert, Vince will sell the tickets and I'll do the NFTs. How's that? <laughs> Is that a collaboration or what? <laughs> Super, merci. <laughs> um, okay, we're sort of 15 minutes away from the end. I wanted to thank everyone. I want you guys to have the last word. Before that, I'm going to um, just promote the next webinar, which will be the final one of this series on the 16th of November. And it's the Internet of Things, IoT, and is it the new ledger for those new generation? And we sort of approached that a little bit with the archives 
um, you know, of the Red Cross, but also I'm sure, Marco, you've got loads of archives and music and probably Vince, you do too. And there's, I'm sure there's collectibles in there somewhere that can be I, either preserved for the future and the future generations, but also perhaps commercialized in some way or another. You know, what do you think of that? Like you, Vince, with your collectibles, would it be like protecting it as well for the future? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot you know we can share later, and, and uh, I'd be glad to be back and talk about more things, uh, more collectibles, and and uh, you know what this year's strategy is for uh, the collectibles, and and maybe even share some uh, photos and and uh, uh, some of the work that we're doing. Very good. I we look forward to that. And what about you, Marco? Do you think that there is a um... You know the way forward basically is positive and it's in the metaverse and it's going to be uh more about you know music and entertainment creativity all that of course yes uh i used to say not, not only positive but pro positive good because because uh, we we should uh it's, it's really beautiful what you say what you said before uh because yeah i think that the uh, artificial intelligence. I made uh, a, a musical concept on uh, artificial intelligence last year, and uh, so is uh, something that uh, uh, is really around uh, my thought uh, every day like, uh, <laughs> from uh, since a long time. Um, but I was not want to say uh, it's important that artificial intelligence of the future will understand that there is no not only uh cyber bullism or uh, a war or um well or violence but there is a lot of uh, of peace in, in the art of people there is the need uh, the real need the peace and the love uh i don't want to seem uh, a hippie but it's <laughs> like a, it's like a, a true uh, story uh, we we are made of love and we are made of peace and so i think that we need to to use this kind of technologies uh to improve this kind of uh, uh emotions and messages last year for example in metaverse uh, the nemesis we made a concert for avatar and was okay. beautiful was beautiful to play for avatar people we were in our studio uh, and we played in this uh, uh, metaverse uh, the nemesis well uh, i can tell you that well is of, of course obviously it's not the same as to play on a stage of course because there is the people around you and blah blah but the, uh, well we felt uh, really strong emotions when we were playing was like to play for someone more than when you play for example on streaming during okay that's interesting yeah dur during pandemic you can you, you obviously know that that we, we musicians producers uh, uh directors everybody we try to use it in different way um internet uh, but there was like this really hype of, of uh, using internet in all over the world of, of course and they made a lot of streaming concert but when we made this concert in the uh, the metaverse was really different i can tell you because we why? were i don't know why because we were watching in um we were watching in another video what was happening in the metaverse and so it was interesting that there was the uh, avatar people that were uh, like uh, floating in the metaverse, like uh, swimming uh, uh, in the uh, in this in the sea in the sea where uh, there was this huge uh, screen uh, where there was our our concert. And That's so, amazing. Yeah, it was really really nice. It was really Thank nice, you. but. Uh, maybe the future is not like so digital i i don't i don't want to to think about the future like uh, um ready player one the beautiful uh, movie of spielberg but i want to think that maybe will be digital mm, there will yeah. be like uh, more uh, more uh, uh, digital for sure but in in the live shows maybe yeah there's um last year i was at right. um we were at Davos in, uh, for the World Economic Forum week, and there was um, a display of holograms. And the lady was telling me that they, um, 
this, they had this hologram of Moody, the president of India, and they, vis they moved this box with the hologram to all the villages out in the country where there's no TV or anything. And people literally thought Moody was in the box and was talking to them. And they were very touched that, you know, this future president or the guy that was trying to get them to vote for him was coming to their village. So he got elected basically thanks to the, well, I'm sure he had great ideas as well for the country, but I mean, the hologram helped a whole lot because all of a sudden for the first time people were able to, well, they believed that he came to their village and that's where this physical comes in. Could be scary, of course, it shouldn't be misused in any way, but um, yeah, I think the digital, the, the human will not go away. I mean, we're here to stay and we're still in control, hopefully. And I think that's where most of us, and especially at uh, Wiseki and many other companies like us, they, you know, that's what we're aiming for is to keep the human at the center of things and, and um, that we can continue inventing, but continue to, as I said earlier, Vincent, we will pull the plug if it goes over the top. All right, that's good. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, again, thank you so much. Um, it was a pleasure talking to you guys. Um, you guys all have your emails, so you can contact each other outside of me, which is a pleasure. And uh, Mr. William, I hope we've uh, answered your question, Mr. William Tavalli, and thank you for joining us too. See you in a month's time. Bye. Thank you, Sixteen. Thank you.